Okay. So we're recording now, right? So yeah. this is the number two that we've done. Number two, we did one yesterday. Today's now June 11th, 2023. And it's around noon mountain standard time right now, right? Yeah. That's when we're recording this. Okay. And this is yep. sort of a time capsule for who knows what knows in the future. Okay. So um, this is off the ranch, right? With Chuck That's and us. Dean. Chuck and Dean. Yes. Is it Chuck and Dean or Dean and Chuck? It's Charles. Oh, it's oh, I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's you're right. I've always called you Charles and Tina. I know. It, yeah. It's Charles and Dean. Let's how would you just call it? Charles and Dean. Sure. Okay, great. Okay. So I'm um, Charles. This is evidenced probably by my my name. Yeah. Right? And mine is my finger there. Mine is my initials. Okay, Dad. That's those are my initials. And when I play video games, I always have to put in dad. People always go, you, what? Your dad? Yeah, I'm dad. Of course I'm dad. So yeah, I'm just got that penguin thing going. Um, that's my logo. So anyway, let's get back to what we want to talk about today. So yeah, I, I'm informally calling this discussion, this interview, the great disclosure. Okay. But before we talk about that, we need to do full disclosure between us and who's ever listening to this. There's some things they need to understand about us. If they're listening to these recordings, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All of what we say in all the recordings that we do are going to make a lot more sense. If there's a couple of things we say up front. And so I think what we really need to discuss is your, your health situation. Yeah, because it's directly relevant to, you know, our larger comprehensive discussion. Um, in the process of filing for disability um, due to a myriad of health conditions, many of which are considered rare and unusual. Um, this podcast has turned out to be one of the few things I can do because basically all I have to do is just kind of sit here for you know a couple hours. But even that, it takes it takes me days to recover just from the discomfort of sitting here and and talking to you. Um, I've been diagnosed with small fiber neuropathy, fibromyalgia, um, oh my gosh, polymorphic light eruption, burning mouth syndrome, you know, like <laughs> a myriad of things, a glioma, um, which for those who don't know is, is a brain tumor. Now that's what they're diagnosing it as because they found a one centimeter object in the center of my cerebellar vermis. Um, they found it seven years ago which is the typical life expectancy for a glioma. But this one hasn't changed at all. And the doctors are like, we're still calling it a glioma. You know, we don't, we don't know what it is. Um, and it's odd. I was diagnosed with another thing, spinal epidural lipomatosis, um, which was an object that showed up in MRIs in my spine. I didn't meet any of the other diagnostic criteria for it. You know, they're, they're typically people who are, um, grossly obese and have diabetes or a bunch of other comorbidities, none of which I had. But, you know, there's a thing in my spinal canal. They don't know what it is. So most likely think spinal epidural lipomatosis. And a few years later, it disappeared, um, which if you check the medical literature, there is one article about that happening. And that's it. Like it never happens. So it was another example of you know, we don't know what this is. Um, it correlates with the history of experiencers um, who very often have even some of the same medical conditions that I'm struggling with. And they're trying to tease out what the potential connection there is. All they know is that there is a connection there. And this is even related to the research that Gary Nolan is doing. I've reached out to Gary Nolan. We've communicated a little bit about the potential of doing some research um, or my, not us doing research, my participating in research that Gary is doing. Um, but I do think that, you know, the, the medical problems are a big part of the history with experiencers. Um, yeah. And, and psychological issues, including PTSD, severe depression. Um, they know that they correlate, but of course, since, contact or abduction is not officially recognized um that is never the diagnosis they just say oh these things correlate 
there was a concerning statistic I recently read in an article, 57% of people who go to psychiatrists or psychologists claiming they've been abducted by aliens end up committing suicide. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a rough ride. And a lot of that has to do with these types of problems that people are also dealing with at the same time. And they're bouncing from specialist to specialist trying to get answers. I mean, I've seen every doctor under the sun. I got a stack of medical literature this thick, which is only a fraction of my record. Um, you know, 20 MRIs on DVD, x-rays, you know, blood work, all kind, everything you can imagine. I've done all the tests and all they can keep saying is we don't really know, like come back when it gets worse. Um, right. And it's, let's hope it doesn't get worse. So this tumor that's in your brain, you, you sort of described where it is, but give us a better description. Is it like in the center of your brain? I'll, in the we'll, side? Of, where, where is the tumor? We'll go ahead and we'll throw the image into the video. Um, you sure you want to do I'm that? Totally fine with that. I've already shared it online. Okay. Uh, so describe my, it to me. So that for those that aren't, can't see for it. For those that just aren't gonna, Yeah. Who are, who are only listening um, towards the bottom part of the brain above the brainstem, basically directly above the brainstem. There is a perfectly circular one centimeter object. It does not have hard edges, um, but it, it is in the center of my brain towards now, the rear. Now, this and, is and lower down. You would not classify this as a, an implant. I I am open to the idea, but how would you ever prove that? But you don't like, suspect that. You don't have a memory of anything, or you would never say, "Yeah, I suspected it was an implant." I mean, you're not making that claim at all. Are you, are you claiming it might be, or it could be, or you might. I'm, I'm saying it could be. Yeah. Because under hypnosis, it came out that, you know, that there were implants. And I think that that was one of the ones that was implicated, but I don't trust the hypnosis all that much. But when you uh, talk about it as a tumor, you really think it's a tumor, not a, an implant in your own mind. Sorry for the pun. In your own, <laughs> in my in own your, mind, in yeah. your own mind <laughs> that's in your brain, it's not an implant. I I am 50 50. I am completely serious. I don't. Uh, is this, don't is this Schrodinger's cat again? Is it is this porcupine versus dino beaver again? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, and this is this is one of the things about me is I've learned to be okay living in that gray area of. I don't know. I don't have enough information to make it a conclusion. And so I don't, I just go, I don't know. Like if it starts to change, then we'll go, Oh, well, it's probably a tumor, but for now it's a question mark. And that was one of the reasons why I reached out to Gary Nolan, who's been researching very similar things. I don't want to say the same things. And I was like, is this of interest to you? And you know, maybe. So we'll, yes. we'll see. Okay, so hold on. You're you've got me thinking about some things here. So, it if it were a tumor, it would have killed you already, right? Statistically, statistically, it, you should yes. be dead. Yes. If it was a tumor, because it would grow. But yes. it hasn't grown. It has not changed at all since it was initially found. It's not changing shape. It's not changing size in any way. No. And that's why you're still alive. Yes. And if it was a tumor that would grow, you would not, we would not be talking right now. I would have never, probably never even met you. No, because typically once they, you know, once they start to grow um, without treatment, the life expectancy is like two to three months. With treatment, it extends out to about 12 months, but it's invariably fatal. It's, and it's just a, at that point, it's just a ticking time bomb. Yes. And yeah, yeah, and so you don't feel like you're in a ticking time bomb situation right now, do you? Right now, like today? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I, I just don't think about it because I'm like, it is or it's either going to happen or it isn't. But, it, you know, this is the way life goes. Like, we could all drop dead at any moment. Right, um, right. Well, the statistical likelihood of it being sooner has gone up. That's about it. That's about all I can say. I tend right. to think of things in terms of probabilities. Okay, got it, got it. And I'm thinking in terms of who's going to listen to this, when and where and who. We don't know the audience, right? At all. We're just recording a we're just recording a video and putting it on a file. 
Sure. And I just want to make sure that we've got a snapshot today of exactly the situation you're in. You clearly can't really work even Mm part-time. I mean, I've got signs of arthritis, although, you know, the markers for that come and go um, and uh, autoimmune condition I've had for people who will know what this means. I've had an ANA of one to 640, which is diagnostic typically for like um, Sjogren's or lupus. I have been told in the past that by a rheumatologist that they thought I had lupus and then they did more testing and they were like, "Mm, it's behaving like lupus, but we don't have the the test to confirm that. Um, so yeah, like pretty much everything I do is ends up causing me pain or just wiping me out energy wise. Yeah. So yeah, it's gotten to a point where I haven't been able to, I used to be, I was my own boss had, you know, my computer consulting business before that I did graphic design work. I have a degree in advertising and graphic design. I was doing that for 15 years, got to be a creative director. And- wow. Yeah, didn't did, didn't want to do advertising anymore. It's kind of soul sucking and morally repugnant. Um, and I was always doing the tech stuff at my work anyway, and enjoyed that more, and just kind of migrated to that. Right. I did that for ten years as my own boss, but I couldn't I couldn't keep my clients towards the end because I was just so unreliable because of my my health. And so that's put me in a situation of filing for disability, which is, you know, a nightmare for those who don't know. I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, soul crushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More so than advertising. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that's that's full. And that's disclosure. why I shift around a lot. Yeah, I'm going to be moving around a lot. <laughs> it explains a lot. In. See that getting yeah. getting that off your chest. That it just explains a lot. And as people listen to us when we record in the future, it'll make a lot more sense because they understand where you're coming from. So that's, I appreciate I, you doing that. I want to say anecdotally, uh, one of the last rheumatologists that I saw, he said to me very seriously, have you ever heard of anybody with this many rare and unusual health conditions? And th- what I wanted to say to him was yes, but all of them think they've been abducted by aliens. But I, I couldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I want to note, by the way, that I have a psychiatrist and a therapist, and they are both fully informed about everything that I'm experiencing, everything I'm thinking, the whole situation. Um, and because of the relationship that I've had with them, which goes back before I started experiencing all of the woo and you know figuring things out. Um, my therapist has acknowledged that I've changed her views on this and that she has now come to accept that, you know, a lot of these things are, are real. Yep. So I think that says something. I'm glad you mentioned that. Excellent. She gave me permission to discuss that. You know, I promised I wouldn't disclose her name at this point. Um, right. But, but you're disclosing your situation. You're not, yeah. you're, there's still some privacy even with disclosure. Right. And I think everybody's feeling that right now. I'm I'm talking about June 11th, 2023. I'm you know Sunday morning. Yeah, we anticipated a New York Times article this morning about the full disclosure that's going on right now with and supposedly tonight. and tonight. So and then yeah, it's Stephen Greer. So that's what I want to talk about was well, what not- the hell is going on right now? Yes, um, like right now. So tonight we're going to be hearing some of the interview between. Ross Coulthart and David Grush, um, who was a former high ranking intelligence community official uh, who reported directly to the president. Um, I mean, he was one of the top people in the intelligence community. He is incredibly well respected by his peers. Everybody says, you know, the guy is um, competent and honest and believable and the claims he is making right now are shaking things up because to most people they're completely unbelievable which are the u.s government has uh you know a dozen or more spacecraft in their possession they have bodies of non-human beings um he's careful to try and avoid the term Aliens or extraterrestrials. Um, yeah, and 
we're only getting a small amount. We've only gotten a small amount of what's going to be coming out tonight. It's an hour of an interview that is apparently a total of seven hours in length, <laughs> which we're going to be getting the full thing later from from Ross and and his right. co-host on the Need to Know podcast or vidcast, as they call it. Um, Bryce Zabel, Zabel, Z A B E L. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Zabel, Zabel. Yeah, know. I've also seen it. Bruce Zabel. I, so, but I think it's Bryce Sable. Um, but anyway, yeah, a seven hour interview there. Uh, we're going to get an hour of it tonight, but we're going to get the full picture later. But he's even saying, you know, that doesn't include some of the classified stuff he can't talk about. That's been one of the big questions is why is he allowed to talk about some of this stuff at all? It should all be classified. You would think it would all be classified. But technically, he was not in the program himself. Um, I don't know all the ins and outs of why he's allowed to say some of this stuff and why he isn't. But it's you know it's definitely worthy of discussion, and and apparently we're going to learn more about that tonight. And then there's going to be another hour after the interview. There's going to be like a, a at least an hour or more worth of analysis of what he said, and I don't know who's going to be interviewed there. Um, and you mentioned Greer, right? Greer is doing yep. a, a big press event over a few days where he's got people coming, including other government whistleblowers who claim that they've seen absolutely incredible things, including um, military soldiers loading guns into a UFO. And then the UFO rose up into the sky and shot off to the horizon and at an estimated four thousand miles an hour. With with guns inside that they with loaded it guns up. Guns in it, yes. And now this guy claims he testified to Congress about this, um, which means he, you know, he made these claims under oath that he directly witnessed this. He gave the names of the other witnesses. Um I, you know, I mean, even for me, I'm just like, wow. If I just read that somewhere, I'd be like, "Eh, I I need a little more evidence on that." Um, it's it's also unbelievable still. It for is a lot of, for a lot of people. A lot of people just they didn't buy into Bob Lazar to begin with, and this sounds like Bob Lazar again. Oh, that all gosh. sounds familiar. But, I mean, we if should you, talk if, about Lazar too well, later. But the, but the people who don't believe Bob Lazar are not going to listen to this. It's this. It's the same thing, you know, and it, it's. It's just one of those things again that divides the uh, UFO com community. And I don't really feel like that much of a part of that community. Anyway. Do you? Do you feel like you're a part of the UFO community, whatever that is? I mean, I don't. Not as all. much as people might suspect. Um, I mean, obviously, I believe in UFOs, UAP. Um, I've seen one myself. We could talk about that at another point. Um. You know, the whole phenomenon that I'm potentially a part of is connected with UAP or UFOs. But, I mean, so much of these stories, are, they don't make any rational sense. Well, so specifically on, on our UFOs on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, on Reddit, sorry, on Reddit, yeah. right? Yes. Y you spend a lot of time there. I don't. I don't post there. I don't. I skim, I look at what you post on there and it reads like a book. You're always, <laughs> like, you're doing a daily dissertation on there right now because of disclosure and you're on the front lines of something historical. And that's how, how people are dealing with this because you are, you see a lot of people reacting and how the establishment is reacting to this as well. You tried to post the actual story on other reddits. Right. Yes. Other subreddits. Yes. And, yeah. Well, and what happened? This is legitimate news. It's a legitimate story from a legitimate news site. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 that's the rule. It's got to be news. It's got to be real. It's got to be. It's got to come from a credible source. Credible, all of that. Exactly. And it's got to yeah. be relevant to what's going on. And if it's true, it's a big deal. Yep. And what happened? 
And if you post it to a subreddit such as, you know, our news or world news, um, not only are the stories getting removed, but people are getting permanently banned simply for submitting the story. It's completely being covered up. There's no good reason for them to be blocking it. I mean, it's one thing if it's coming from the Daily Mail, you know, that's not that's paper does not have. Or the New a York Post reputation for credibility, <laughs> or the, or New, the York New York Post, Post right? <laughs> but when the when the source of the story is, for example, the director of national intelligence, Avril Haines, um, that becomes more newsworthy. But then, if you take that same story and you you have it in the Hill or the New York Times, that warrants being discussed as news. But it's not allowed to be discussed. Well, you UFOs are not a topic that the public is allowed to hear about. You you can't post it on our space. Nope. They'll take it off. You and you can't post it on our NASA. Even though NASA has a commission now. Yeah. You, you cannot post that article on our NASA. You gave me a challenge to try to get it on some of these other subreddits. And I, I tried and I couldn't. I, I offered a hundred dollars. Got deleted. You offered a hundred dollars yeah. for anyone... twenty four hours. <laughs> yeah, I was like, if anyone can get this on a subreddit within twenty four hours, I'll give you a hundred dollars. Um, which for me is, you know, in my situation, that's a fair amount of money. Hold on, but it had to be the top, like in the top ten or the top twenty subreddits. Yeah, it something had to like be, that. Yeah, it had to be in a in a a decent sized subreddit where, where it's going to have. I think it was maybe it was a cap of like a hundred thousand, not less than a hundred thousand subscribers or whatever you basically which the big is not boys much on reddit. Yeah. but it's the big boys on reddit i yes. i couldn't get it to happen i couldn't make it happen no and i've been banned from but it, i think it was uh, damn you. damn that's interesting i think um damn that's interesting banned you yeah well initially they just removed it and then i said could you i asked the mods through mod mail politely can you explain why it was removed like did i break the rules i can fix what i did wrong and they're like, this doesn't belong here. It belongs on our conspiracy. And I was like, but it's a it's a relevant story. It's from a credible source, blah, blah, blah. Banned. That was it. No more discussion. They just don't want to have to deal with it, basically. So, I mean, this is news. I think this is something that no matter what happens in the future, people remember that there was resistance to full disclosure. Yeah, and, and the people are going to be saying, how come... We haven't heard about this before. Oh, you know, that's what everyone's going to say is, first of all, here's what's going to happen. When full disclosure happens, whatever form it takes, we think that there's going to be some great big disclosure event this summer, right? By the end of August, early September, and maybe even sooner than that. So we're talking about a, a big disclosure event, right? That that's disclosure, what we're being told. here's how I think people are going to react to it. They're going to say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Then it's going to be WTF, WTF, WTF. And then what do we do now? Or what do I do now? I still got to get up in the morning. I think it's going to be something of that impactful. It won't be, you know, they won't say the F word. They're going to say WTF because it's going to be everybody saying it. Even kids are going to be saying mommy WTF. It, it's going to be that kind of a disclosure, I think. Or it won't be, and we can look back on this and say, we got fooled again by all the people that are actually saying this. We're not basing this on you, you and I, right? We're, where's this coming from? Why do we think there's going to be big disclosure? What are the big names and big groups that are actually suggesting that right now? More and more people in the intelligence community are acknowledging that this phenomenon is real, that there are objects that, you know, everything the Pentagon has has been disposed towards this, in terms of sensors and you know brain power trying to figure it out and they're going we don't know what it is but we know what it isn't it's not us it's not a foreign power where does that leave us and they don't want to say aliens nobody wants to be the first person to say it's aliens except for you know this whistleblower but nobody in the government because what happened was this whistleblower he retired or resigned in april of this year and I don't think that was a coincidence. Like he got out and then immediately started coordinating. And I'm guessing probably started coordinating it ahead of time. 
um, how he was going to, you know, come forward as a whistleblower. And he helped draft the language for the whistleblower protections. He was one of the people who helped draft that language to allow people like him to come forward without going to prison. So right. we've got more and more credible people talking about it in the government. And we've got scientists like Gary Nolan who are saying, I was kind of brought in, read in a little bit, um, given access to some of the classified information. And he's like, 100%, this is non-human intelligence. 100% confidence on Gary Nolan's part. It's like, without a doubt, the things I've seen, this is not human. And, and, and more and more people are are coming forward with that. And right, and irrefutable evidence of that truth and reality, that that's the root universe we actually live in. Um, right. But as that evidence... gets out, it's the evidence, but as that gets out, that undeniable fact gets out, it affects that collective unconsciousness that you talked about yesterday. Yeah. Right. Where when people go, oh, it's real, it sort of loosens up the limitations. I think that the collective unconscious, for the most part, is the dampering effect. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Going yeah. to the back to the Skimwalker Ranch analogy, you've got a lot of people on there on the ranch at the same time. Unconsciously, they don't want to have an experience. And so it dampens down what could possibly happen, right? That's what you there, were talking about yesterday, is that this is driven by by consciousness and the collective unconscious has some psi abilities, right? To manifest things or not, right? And what I'm saying is it, as soon as we, we actually admit that there's craft and we have bodies, doesn't that make it more possible for more people to actually see craft in the sky? They, there's some Does that make sense? That. It sort yeah. of opens the gate. Yes. And there's... so this kind of feeds on itself. You have a news story about this and then you have a sighting. You know, it's, it rolls out. It's not one, it's not one event that just, Hey, one day it's people start seeing more and more craft. There's more and more Stephen green street type experiences where they see the boomerang, right? Like so maybe even the daytime. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> there's a story and it's one of those, you know, people kind of call it a trust me, bro story. Um, because none of these people are willing to go on the record or have been in the past, but it was supposedly somebody in the intelligence community who had knowledge of the program and was working on it. And they said one of the theories that they had was that if public awareness was raised on this issue, if, if enough people knew about it, it would make it easier for these beings to enter into our reality. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And that's being It opens the gates. About, yes. Yep. Well, yeah, and there was that sighting in Vegas, right? Was it North Las Vegas? Oh, that's yeah, that's. I know some yeah, people down there, and that's that's is that would that something would go on in a Las Vegas neighborhood, or North Las Vegas? It could, it could be real. We <sighs> there's a lot of controversy about it. Um, I I don't like to try and judge other people's experiences because. It's almost impossible. You can't just rationally analyze them and go, "This is real and this isn't." Um, don't don't have enough information. It, it could it, have been faked. It, it could, could be have fake. been faked because the guy who reported it, he has kind of a history. It appears he has some history of being interested in UFOs. Um, I gather something like five or six months ago. He claimed that a woman came up to him at a gas station and told him he was going to meet giant aliens. Um, now, the thing is... At a gas station? At a gas station. Yes, some random woman comes up to him. And, and honestly, that high strangeness in some ways adds credibility to the story. <laughs> like, if you, no, but, if but you that know strangeness about the is, phenomenon... Hold on, that strangeness is different. That's That's a different kind of strangeness when... A woman goes up to some man at the gas pump and says, "You're going to meet some tall aliens." That's yes. that's a strange. That's that's not like that's not paranormal. Well, is it? Have you it's read just, much John Keel? Well, I know about um, what was that book called? Intrusions. Ingo or penetration. Swan. Penetration. Yes. Yeah. Pen not intrusions. Penetrations. Penetrations. Ingo Swan. People. A woman in the supermarket. Yep. And Who, then the black men show up right then and there and say, Oh, dude, get away from her. 
Yeah. I love that story. Oh, I love that his story. That, that should be made into a movie. They should make an should actual be. movie or at least a comic novel of his book because it's, it's over the top and it's so real. I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. he never lied and you know, he kind of like gave his life to this and it's so undeniable that it's, it's, it's his real experience. And when and you it, read it, you're just like, and oh, it's come no, on. come on, like, give me is... a break. Like, there's no way. But that's kind of the way the phenomenon seems to operate. And that's I, why yeah. I was like, you know what? I can't judge other people's stories. I can't even sort through my own. Like, when I did my one of my hypnosis regressions, which I'm making publicly available um, with Stuart Davis, afterwards, when I came out of it, I was like, this is proof that it was all bogus. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> the stuff that came out of my mouth, I was like, you know, uh, granted I must be a good storyteller for sci-fi because I came up with this whole thing about how the mantis were operating. The mantis beings were interacting with humanity and, and the way they operated within time and, and they were assisting with certain things. And it was like this big picture of the universe. And I had these terms like, you know, guardians, um, there was this whole hierarchy. I was like, where the hell did any of this come from? I'd never heard of any of this stuff. I was not reading abduction literature or whatever. And then after that, I up from other experiencers, I was hearing the same details, the same things. Was it, is it in the collective unconscious? And I just kind of tapped into it? Or was it something I experienced? I don't know, but it was it was validated in that way. Like it doesn't mean it's real, Yeah. but other people were experiencing it and it, it's something. That's right. all I can say. It's, it's, it's real. It's real, right? It's, it's, we, we experience it as real. And that's what matters is that the people who are telling these stories to them, it's real. Okay, so you're you're the moderator, one of the moderators of experiencers. Mm -hmm. Isn't that another source of this sense that something big is happening going to happen this summer? Is there an uptick? You know, what are, what are the experiencers experiencing about this summer? I know yeah, that some have been having this... dreams. Some yeah. of them have posted about dreams where there's a fleet of of, of craft. It's a recurring well, that kind of goes dream. out a little bit further. Okay. There's a lot of belief that something is coming in the 2026 to 2027 range. And we we caution everybody, like, even if you got abducted in the middle of the day by an alien, they sat you down in a chair and you were wide awake and fully conscious and they left you all of your memory. If they told you the earth is, you know, going to go through a big change in 2026. That kind of thing has happened over and over again and has not come true for whatever reason. Right. 1980. So, it's going to happen in 1975. The Earth's going to be destroyed in 1986. Yep. Over They're, and over and over, over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And it and so far, it does not appear to have come true, at least not in the universe that you and I are in, you know, maybe in branching out other universes. That's uh, I don't believe in that. Yeah. There's one universe. I live in one universe. Sorry. So I'm not a multiverse fan, but some people in the, in the, I don't want to say in the government, but people who are related to disclosure, like Gary Nolan um, are saying that, you know, they think something might be happening in 2026. I don't want to put Gary Nolan on the spot. He may not be one of the people. John Ramirez has certainly said it. Um, Lou Elizondo has hinted at it. Leslie Kane has said they're talking about it. Um, and, and Chris and Bledsoe. They're, and they're worried. They're worried. Chris, Chris oh, Bledsoe. Chris Bledsoe is, yeah, he's, and I kind of wonder how many people are repeating his story. So we should talk about Chris Bledsoe. Now you've read his book, UFO of God. Uh, yes, I've read do that you book. Wanna, do you want to kind of sum up the Chris Bledsoe oh, thing? Oh boy, here? wow. You want me to try and do it? I've read the book. Um, there's so many ways you can tell his story. It, it's 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 as complex as a story as you've had or have I had in my life. Maybe even more so complex. I mean, just um, but basically, you know, let's talk about where he's at today. 
So he's at his house now. His health is good. He's got, he finally got a book deal. Somebody bought his story. You know, he got his story rights. So he got the book out. He's doing much better. He's still seeing orbs. I'm kind of going back in time. He's, he's still seeing orbs. And his biggest encounter was with a white Madonna type figure, an angel. Actually, a white Except figure. He refers to her as the lady. The lady. Yeah, yeah the lady. And he's, he did an actual drawing of her, a painting of her. So you can actually see exactly what he says she looked like. She was hovering above the ground. I think she was accompanied by, by Grays. I think he, and one, another instance when she appeared, it was also a big bull, a giant bull that appeared as well. That was like, you know, and then she appeared and she had told him repeatedly that something big is going to happen. Like either in the spring or in the fall around Easter equinox kind of things. Um, yeah, but they've had a, a like a burning tree. That's, that's a video that's online. This is real. They've got a bunch of people in their backyard and they've got a tree that's got a little slit in it and it's on fire on the inside. And on the outside, the tree is absolutely fine. Yeah. And they're shooting this on video. They douse it with water. It goes out and then it comes back on again and the tree's fine. Now, apparently this is a natural phenomenon. It, it just, it can happen, right? spontaneous combustion, I, whatever. But the fact that it happened to them, it could have happened to their neighbor. It could have happened down the street, but it happened to them. They have things like that happen. And the book is fantastic. Everyone and, should get a copy of it. Everyone should and, read it. Yeah. And I think the big piece of his story was the people who validated it. Well, so and he's he also was... well-connected. That's the other thing is he is, everybody's been to his house. Yes. Yeah. He's had people from the FBI, the CIA, yes, NASA, NASA people from NASA, the NSA, like every three-letter agency you can imagine. He's also had communiques from the Vatican, the Pope. He didn't meet the Pope, no, but the Vatican did contact him because yes. it was this female personage, right? And they've got a they've got a lot of stake in that. And they warned him. They were like the beings that you're interacting with in their ontology are angels and they're dangerous not that they're you know malevolent but they're incredibly powerful and you, if you get too close to them you'll get injured and this is based on the vatican's research and history and everything and don't get close to them physically do not get no, close to these figures because the energy they put off can cause you to get sick so <laughs> which is the same thing that we're hearing from people in the government now who you are know, researching Kit Green, Gary, Gary Nolan, to some degree. Uh, again, I don't want to put words in these people's mouths. Go read what they've said. Um, but they're investigating these things. But yeah, these people came out and they came to Chris Bledsoe because they said, we've heard about this woman. You're not the first one to see her. Lots of people have seen her. It's a real thing. And we want to know what she told you. Because we want to, we want to know what's gonna, what's happening. Oh, now, or are they looking for the Antichrist? Is this some about them. them trying to find their Antichrist? Yeah. Now he was threatened by some of these people. His family's lives were threatened by some Be of the people who showed up because they thought he was demonic, or there was something going on that was evil. They, yeah, they. That's some of it. Yeah, there was religion involved. There's. I'm asking you, Just but I read the book. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know how much I don't know how much he talked in the book. No, I. I oh, he did. It, it, it's it. the whole thing. It, he yeah. he goes through his life like it's a recording. He just goes from era to epic to every moment of his life that's meaningful, and it all comes together and makes sense. And he goes into incredible detail. It. I'll tell you, reading his book is a wild ride. When you get done with that book, you feel like you've lived a lot of his life, and you just accept what he's saying is legitimate. It's amazing. And there's kind of a, a completely unrelated, but a companion book called um, American Cosmic by Dr. Diana Pasolka. And she was a theology professor and she kind of helped Chris Bledsoe when all of this was first, you know, when he was first going yep. public about it. Yep. Um, she, even before he got, well known in the public she met with him and tried to help him kind of sort through and, and figure out what was going on because chris bledsoe was a devout christian yes when all this started evangelical evangelical yeah 
and it challenged his faith. He was ostracized from his church. Um, the whole town kind of shunned him. I mean, it really, and his family. It well, was he got horrendous. shafted by uh, one of the, was it TLC Discovery? They did yeah. a hit piece on him. He's got, he's got multiple chapters on that in the book. That was horrible. And MUFON. Yeah, MUFON. Oh, MUFON? Fuck those guys. They smeared him. Oh, that uh, horrible. MUFON, what the hell? I agree. That that yeah. that upset. I'm sorry. That it just upsets me what happened to him. And it, it, that doesn't mean that everyone involved in MUFON is a bad person, but some of the people that are in MUFON may have other motivations. You know, I think they're planted there. Well, um, so d- to do you know what information and to discredit what's going okay, on? Okay, so you you dabble in the whole RUFOs thing. I don't on Reddit. Yeah, I mean, I I don't read the subreddit. I read what you post on that subreddit. Cause it's the only voice of sanity that I can see on there, <laughs> but are they saying on the RUFOs that something's going to happen? I mean, is this a topic of disclosure? Now, it usually gets downvoted. Um, any talk of the woo on RUFOs is still met with not, you know, well, I'm talking about the full disclosure aspect that they see this coming. The news story. They don't talk Chris about Bled, the, the future. No, they, they don't say future. Controversial. No one's saying that it's disclosure is imminent at this point. No, there are. There are people in there who were saying, this is it. We're here. But there are just as many people on our UFOs who are going, nah, we've heard this all before. This is nothing. doesn't mean anything. He's not provided any evidence, they say. So, and I, to which I keep responding. He has provided evidence. You're not going to see it. Like, go get a classification rating you know to the highest level of classified and get right into the project and then you can see it but you're not you're not going to get the evidence that he's providing right to the inspectors general or you know any anybody else congress members of congress yeah yeah um we're not going to get that anytime soon that's going to come later but we should be looking at what he's saying under oath to the government and what happens to you if you lie and he's putting his his life on the line by doing this he could go yeah. to prison yep he could yep so do you personally feel like something's big's going to happen this summer it seems like the event that that chris bledsoe and others are talking about in 2026 is some kind of global catastrophe some kind of i mean like really big thing right yeah we should we but should devote an episode to that. We should, yeah, the eschaton, right? That's the eschaton. Yeah, that's the end of the world. That's singularity. There's that. It's that kind of a thing. Second coming of Jesus Christ or something. Yeah, and Whatever. I don't want people to think that we're like here. We don't believe like, oh, any. The world of this. is ending. No, 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 yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't believe it's ending at all. I think we've got a long, prosperous life ahead of us. I'm just talking because it's June 11th, 2023 about what people what's going on in the world right now yes. what people are yes. talking about and are expecting you know there's a whole historical component about what people went through in covid you know in 2020 2021 but this covid trauma that we all have to some degree everyone was affected by that for the most part everyone has a story they remember what what they were doing and where they were in 2020 and 2021 that's a that's a trauma point and We've got a couple more of those ahead of us is what I'm saying. Not necessarily COVID, but something. And people sort of sense that general overall, that what's going on is not sustainable in their lives. Yeah. In their personal lives, whatever's happening in their personal lives, they know deep down inside it's not sustainable. And then they see what's going on in society and they say to themselves, this isn't sustainable. But for the time being, I'm waking up in the morning and I'm going to work and I'm, you know, I'm living my life. It's like you. You're living day by day. Yeah. Right. But you know, at some point it's not sustainable. Yeah. Where do I go from here? Kind of thing. Exactly. Everybody seems to be feeling that lately. Yes, yes, Um, yes. And so what is this full disclosure? Is it really disclosure that there's, we've got bodies and craft? Is that the full disclosure we're talking about? No. We're talking about something else. So much more than that. Well, let me give you one example. Joe Rogan said that at some point, all of our private data on the internet is going to go public. Facebook is going to have to open up or they just will open up their entire archive. So you can look up anything on anybody, the private messages. You know, see what I'm saying? Joe yeah. Rogan says that's eventually going to happen. He also says eventually we're going to be able to reach each, read each other's minds. What kind of privacy you've got at that point, but just for the time being that maybe that's what happens. 
so or, so or something two, to do with like AI, talked, right? AI yeah. hacks into the NSA and gets all their files out. You know, somehow AI actually breaks all encryption. Or AI created a virus that does a bunch of stuff on the internet. Yeah. But the virus or was becomes created by an AI. Yeah. Or we become self-aware of it. And we think that it's self-aware. Right? It's not really self-aware, but we've decided it's self-aware. Those are two different it. things. Yes, we make a tulpa. We treat we it like it's self-aware, and it's Moloch. We've just created Moloch. You know Moloch, right? You know the term Moloch. I, I'm trying to remember where go, that's from. It goes back to the Bible. It's a false idol that the people oh, okay. worship. The bull, right? Wasn't it a? Bull? I don't remember exactly, but it's it's a, an idol that they create that they worship, and yeah. it ends up where it wants their children. They got to sacrifice their children to the idol Moloch. And they do it. And then the other the other Moloch is in the movie, The Metropolis, where there's this metropolis city. It's all a metaphor. And what keeps the whole city running is this horrible machine underground called Moloch. You know, it pumps the water and gives everybody electricity and flushes the toilets. And it, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it All the electricity comes from it. It's this just incredible machine that does everything for the society. What does that sound like, right? AI? Right. Yeah. But it's buried under the city and it's pure evil. There's all these guys that have to work there 24 seven, just like everyone that has to keep the cloud up today. People have to keep the internet up and running. If people don't show up, things start to not work. Right. Well, we saw this in COVID. It, exactly. So I'm talking about that kind of electronic, you know, solid state entity that John C. Lilly talked about. We already have that today. And it's it just it's called Moloch, basically. You have to watch the movie to see what happens, but that's yeah. what Moloch the word means. Well, right? and you know, there's the internet meme of the orphan crushing machine. The where, orphan, you know, exactly. We've got to continue to feed orphans into the orphan crushing machine, right? Yeah, it doesn't else, start it'll there. It'll stop working, like, and you know, right? It and doesn't people start will be there. Like, well, why do why does it have to run? And it's like, well, because it because it has to run. Like, you can't let it stop. <laughs> And of it, course, it, the exactly it's a machine. Capitalism it's, a, or it's the socialism system or what? A, yeah, it's the it's, system. It's the man, it's the and it's yep. unsustainable. It it cannot go on forever. You can't have exponential growth on a finite planet. Technology and, doesn't and, get to there either. Technology does not get you there. But that's going to come to a head, and it could come to a head this summer. It artificial intelligence. Can we just talk for a second about how crazy artificial intelligence is right now? The new version oh, yeah. of Photoshop. Have you seen that? I have. You've got a photo. You open it up, and it, and it like, it just fills in all the details. And and there's there's another AI that it actually will make. It makes a song with Paul McCartney's voice that sounds like Paul McCartney. And the lyrics were written by AI, and the it, and it sounds it's it's one hundred percent AI Paul McCartney. And think open, about the implications of that. Yeah, AI has been open sourced. You can download an AI and just do it and install I know. it on a raspberry pi computer you know this was when you could when there was inventory it's a 30 dollars computer you could install an ai on it and you have complete control over it you get to feed it whatever information you want because right. the ones that are online they're controlled like if you ask it about any fringe topic any of the woo if you go to like chat gpt and ask it It'll give you all of these disclaimers about, well, you know, this is not really real. It's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Scientists don't accept it. Da, 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 da. Um, I tried with, with Google's Bard. I said, you know, looking at all of the data, I asked it, available for Psi, which is ESP effectively, based on all of the available scientific data, what is the probability that Psi is real? And Google Bard said, Looking at all of the data I have available, probability is that Psi is real. And then like a week later, you ask it that, and it goes, oh, we don't really know. The evidence is not good. The evidence isn't strong. They they fixed that. Like, you're not allowed to know that. And the government has the same attitude. Like, they proved to themselves all this stuff was real, and they used it for 20 years. Right. Um, and then they went, oh, well, the public, there's no way they can know about this. So we need to hide it all. And, you know, AI is taking power and giving it to the people that can't be allowed. Like I was just talking with my sister this morning about how 
at some point they're going to try and curtail this, but the, it's been open nope. source now. No, you it's, can't it, close it, the, you can't close the barn door. You, 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 you can't close the barn door. You can't get the toothpaste back in the tube. You can't get the genie back in the bottle. They can't, they want to license it so that only certain companies actually have a license to do AI. That's not going to work. That's a, that's the, that's the stupidest thing. That's like, you can't sell Tesla cars without a car dealership, right? It's like, it doesn't even make sense. The licensing, that's, that's bogus. The other problem is if we curtail this in any way in the United States, we can't stop China. And China's got a huge AI effort going on and theirs is going to be powerful enough to understand Chinese and those, you know, their pictograms or what, what are they called? Yeah, the, the ideograms. Ideograms. It's, it's thinking in ideograms and it, for it to, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a much more complex, I think, AI and what its capabilities are going to be more profound. But I think the United States, we're going to beat them with AI unless we try to license it and start freaking out. But at the same time, it's absolutely devastating the creative world. Mid-journey. It, it can yeah, create photograph. If any photo professional photographers, it, they're gone. It's over. It's horrible. And the script it's, writers in, in Washington, uh, in Hollywood. Yep. Right. They're striking it's right paradigm now. Paradigm shifting. It's it's toppling all of the structure, um, and this is what the risk is with disclosure, as well, because if the truth comes out, if people know the capabilities of these things, the you know the what it what it all means, the risk is that the structure will just all implode, because you know. Oh, you mean okay? Hold on. You're saying that if the United States military, the United States Air Force, actually, they, it's their it's their tic tac. In other words, they actually have have broken the secret on whatever they got from the craft. This is going out on a limb, but basically, they've discovered free energy and they've discovered anti gravity. We because they're flying craft. Even if we haven't figured it out, let's like, say I we have. What if we yeah. have figured it out? What you're saying then, is that there there's crafts that the air force, the military has that uses this technology. They have zero energy. And, and withholding that is the biggest crime in the history of humanity. Holding um, back on free all energy of the problems that we have, all of the suffering that we have could be reduced if that was simply made public. But what would also fall apart would be capitalism, you know, or communism or socialism or whatever, all of the economic structures. The economic system would fail. implode, would absolutely yeah. implode. Yeah. And it would implode overnight. Yep. It would how many stocks would that affect? Oh it's, my God. It's, everything it's, would tank. They closed the stock market. Like, anyone that's got money in the stock market, anyone that's investing, anyone, as soon as you find out that they've got zero free energy, it affects your your portfolio. Yeah, unless you've invested in maybe Lockheed Martin. <laughs> um, you think someone's going to own it? There's something that big that one company is going to own it and license no, it? No, one company isn't going to own it, but it, it appears that what has happened, the way they've kept this secret for so long and so effectively was they removed it from the government and they gave it to private corporations and said, you guys figure it out. You guys research it. And, you know, you can you can exploit the technologies or whatever. Um, and that way it can't be accessed under FOIA. Congress doesn't know anything about it. So and uh, people can with a straight face say, nope, it's not it's not us. It's not ours. OK, so imagine that one country, let's assume the United States, they've got they've got free energy. They've got Mr. Fusion. Remember on the back of the, the DeLorean yeah. and. In <laughs> Back, Back to Future, Future Two, it was yeah. Mister Fusion, right? And he basically he throws some bananas and a, a beer can in there, and it flies and goes away. That's what we're talking about: free energy yeah. minus right? the bananas and the beer can. Well, but 120, 20 gig, you've got a bolt of lightning in this little thing, right? Yes, and um, that's what we're talking about. So, and it, like it's a working thing; you can like plug it in, right? Okay, so we okay, can hold on. Let me finish here. Yeah. Okay. Hold yeah. on. I'm, I'm talking about the political so implications. <laughs> I know, but what I'm saying is that that's the disclosure. We've got this free energy device, and we've haha, we've got this. China or Russia nuke the United States immediately, or threaten to, because it's such a it, it, that changes the balance of power completely on this planet when one country has free energy yep. and the other countries do not. Yep. That's terrifying. 
It is what, absolutely what, terrifying. What if what if China announced it? You don't think the Pentagon would be going, what the heck are we going to do next? Yeah. What if Putin had free energy? I know. I, I, you go down that rabbit hole, and that's from some serious, some serious stuff. And that could be this grand disclosure we're talking about because it's related to UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> this could all be about free energy, so not about the, the bodies. We need to talk about the bodies too, because some Me people too, are but- saying that they... Bodies are separate from craft. We need to talk about the difference between those two. But before we get off the okay. topic of the technology, the pol- political ramifications. It, yes, but on a nuts and bolts level. So we have these Navy patents. Uh, right. The name on them, Salvatore Pais. Yep. P A I S. Um, for basically, for there's several of them, but one of them is for harnessing energy out of nothingness out of the space quantum space and the other one is um morphing space time and it's a ufo they right. patented a ufo and they did it publicly right and they initially filed for it the u.s navy filed for the patents and the patent office said no you can't patent a theoretical thing like this there's no way there's no evidence for it and the navy came back and said um yeah, so we've we figured this out and it works, and you need to give us the patents. And there was apparently some private back and forth there, and then ta-da, they got the patents. Why would the Navy publicly patent the most important information ever? And why is it when scientists look at the patents, they're like, this is nonsense. This doesn't mean anything. They, I think they left some key pieces out of it. Right, right. But they put enough of it out there to to, to do what? I don't know. I have I haven't been able to figure it out. Like, there's a number of different options there, but I I don't know what they're. Well, I, okay, so I I think I know how this 5D started. Five D chess, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where we're at today. I think this is how this started. This started way back uh, during World War II with downed. German and Japanese aircraft or captured aircraft. And they would reverse engineer. They would tear down that, you know, that Japanese or that German aircraft and they would retool it. And they would learn from it to make our aircraft better. Does that make sense? They find something over in Germany. They bring it back to the United States and Lockheed Martin or whoever's making our bombers or fighters. They tear it down and they look at it. There's a reverse engineering program for Foreign technology. For, yep. foreign, for, I'm going to call it foreign technology, not alien technology, foreign technology. And this is the same time during the Manhattan Project. This is the same time when the Manhattan Project's going on, right? Down in New Mexico. They have a very similar program set up the same way where only people get to see bits and pieces of the German or the Japanese aircraft because they're worried about foreign spies. So this program for reverse engineering, you know, foreign technology is secret it's real and then at some point another kind of craft shows up a crash or a landing they get it and they just put it in the system they they've already got all the top secret infrastructure in place the buildings the protocols the people they just treat this like another german fighter that they've right the reverse engineering they they plug it into that same program so now they're actually yeah. studying it's the same thing they're studying foreign you know objects and also alien objects it's the same program i think at least initially of, yeah i think it's, there's, it probably split up at some point yeah. where if you're making a stealth fighter it's different than if you're trying to reverse engineer an alien craft i can well, I, I can see how this makes sense if they have pieces you know just chunks of metal from a with from isotopes wreckage, it yeah what that would go to a different division than if they had right. a whole craft which they are like, you know, people can't study this without knowing what the hell it is, you know, because um, if they're going to get hands on, they got to see the whole thing. They're going to they're going to be like, holy crap, this is this is, you know, non-human. Um, that's going to have to be a little more discreet than just, you know, the Chinese balloon they shot out of the sky or whatever. Right. Yeah, that's a slab. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so let's like, let, let's talk about the bodies. Let me start. I'm going yeah. to give you my informed opinion about the bodies. So Jim Semivan, he did a bunch of podcasts uh, with a group of people 
uh, that were amazing. And he talks about his book, Secret Machines. He's the former director at a former director at the CIA. He's a former director of the CIA. Yes, exactly. Um, and there's another guy, John Lavender, they wrote the book. Anyway, I've read the books and they're a compilation, both of them, of a lot of stories, a lot of data. You know, it's one of those books that they put all these stories together to say, here's what we know about this specific topic. And they have a chapter on what the alien, what these alien bodies, literally what the bodies are, right? And this is across the board, fairly consistent with experiencers, that the greys, they don't have a functioning mouth. They don't eat. They've got a slip for the nose, but they don't breathe. They don't have ears and they absolutely cannot hear sound. There's no waste baskets in any of these rooms. There's no garbage. They don't, they don't digest. They don't have a butthole either. They don't, they don't eat and nothing comes out the other end. There's no bathrooms. No sex organs. No sex organs, no genitalia. And there's people that have stories where they're dealing with grays like in the daytime and the guy tries to stab the alien, and he can't, it's, he can't penetrate the skin of the alien, right? The so-called alien. Sometimes they look like they're walking like it's mechanical or weird, awkward, right? So they don't speak. They don't, can't hear. Think about that for a minute. What the hell is that? It's not necessarily alive. In our, uh, here's what I think. I think when they get the bodies, they open them up. It's just gelatin inside. There's no organs. There's no stomach. There's no lungs. There's no, it's jelly or something. And, but what's the brain? What's the brain of an alien? It's not alive. Is it, is it some kind of robot or is it a puppet? Where it's not, it's actually being controlled from the other side of the veil. Does that make sense? It's not what everything that makes it function is not actually physically present. Uh, (laughs) Like wrap your head around. I'm not talking about mantis or the lizard man. Right, right. I just mean the grays, just the grays alone. How do you tell that story? What the hell are they? There's so much backstory, but we're going to know. Well, we're not going to know. No, if no, if somebody has dissected an alien body that was a gray or gray like, Mm -hmm. they know. They know. Yes, they know whether it has. Remember, ET. He's got DNA. What if they go? It doesn't have DNA. What if they say it's human DNA? Well, yeah, mostly uh, human DNA. And it doesn't have organs and it doesn't crap and it can't hear. What kind of a, what? So we share what? 98% of yeah, our with, DNA yeah, with, yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. chimpanzees. No, you got a good point. It could be, it could be, I don't like the hybrid thing. That really bothers me. I don't like to go there with the hybrid It's uncomfortable. Thing. It's very and, uncomfortable. And I, yeah, I think I don't it's wanna... one of those things where it's like, it's fine to acknowledge it's there. Potentially, there's but, no point in in doing a deep dive on it. No, I know? can't. I can't go there. I can't go yeah. there. But, um, but that's but why I hesitate it's with a that thing that comes up over and over and over again. Well, I I think that this is related to the woo. That the the, the thing about the grays is that they don't have an inherent consciousness. A consciousness is migrated into a gray as necessary. The gray is basically a meat puppet. That's what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's not uh, autonomous. But the idea that a consciousness can move in and out of a body is not limited to a gray. It's just that the ability to create the bodies the way they're doing it is different than the normal routine of, you know, having sex, baby comes out, it grows up and matures and then eventually dies or whatever. Um and at some point, a consciousness migrates into that. There's the woo component that people are like, I, I'm not ready for that. You know? Right, right. The thing is, this is all speculation until we actually know for sure. And we're, we may all get to know, but some other human beings already have these answers and already know out there. They and know the they, truth. I think they have a lot more information. I still wonder... If they have any conclusions, well, okay, hold on. They only have hypotheses, right? But what if there really are not any reverse programs that they never really existed, and this is a psyop? What if what if there's actually no craft, no alien bodies? Absolutely, like it absolutely didn't happen. It absolutely does not exist. What do the powers that be do? How do they deal with that? How do they prove it's not been a program and they don't have reverse? You see what I'm saying? How could they actually just prove it? Say, damn it, 
come to area 51. We're going to give public tours. Hangar 18. Here's a hangar 18. You can't, you, guys, prove it. you can't prove a negative. That's the problem they're in. They can't prove it's not real. But it is real. And but it's I'll tell not. You why. I'll tell you why. It's not real. We don't well, know the, that. The reverse it's engineering a- programs may not be, but the phenomenon is because it's not just the government that is telling us these things. The government is the smallest component of the people who are like, I'm having direct experience with these things. And they're, you know, countless people hundreds of thousands or millions worldwide of people have been having experiences with these objects. They're not all lying or, or crazy. We know that right. they're not crazy. These people have been studied extensively and all the mental health professionals are like, no, they're, they're sane. And they're actually often, you know, they're in the higher end of intelligence. That's not bragging. It's just statistically, these people aren't dumb and they're not crazy. Right, um, but right. they're experiencing things that are unexplained, and that's why I'm like, it's not a psyop. The whole thing about the reverse engineering programs or all of that stuff that could be bullshit. Well, and could this could be. all this could all be they actually started this lie with inside a, a real a real reverse engineering program, right? For for foreign craft, mm-hmm. but they planted this story among people to see if it would spread virally right? Social contagion. And then anybody that leaked it, they could bust them because they know it's not real. Does that make sense? As yep. soon as anyone's, hey, you know, Frank told me that there's a reverse engineering program. You arrest Frank immediately because you know that he's leaked yeah. a lie. You tell a lie and if it gets leaked, you know who's your, where your leaks are basically. Yeah. Like Apple did this yeah. right? would, internally, they would publish things, but they would change the wording or they would change the details. And then if it got out to the press, they they knew who was leaking the information about the right. products. And this has absolutely happened in the past. The relationship between the military and the intelligence services and the general public regarding UFOs is horrible. The way they've treated the the public, right? And that's All these part years. of what's coming out tonight. Well, see um, that again. That's full disclosure. How they actually treated? They got people killed. People have been killed for this. Yeah. We're trying to say what happened to them. It's happened. Yeah. UFO guys have disappeared, right? When they were just about ready to break something. Um, the men in or black. people who did break it and then they, you know, they committed suicide in. Right. Jumped out in, of a building. Yeah. It, come on. Yeah. Or, well, got, got hit we by don't a truck. Go into all the details. Yeah. But with mysterious circumstances. Let's put it that way. Ridiculous circumstances. R- but if that, them, if know, that came out, they say, you know, we don't have any craft. We're not reverse engineering, but we did a lot of bad things the last 50 years to people. No that one have... will believe it, though. Everybody's convinced that they have the, the objects and blah, blah, blah. They can't undo that story. It's always going to be there. They can't prove it is not true. Even if it isn't true, they can't <laughs> prove that. <laughs> um, so, and they created whistleblower protections to protect the people who are coming forth to tell what would potentially be a lie, you know? So, so it's like, so who it would have gotten completely out of control for that? So who at the Pentagon let this happen to begin with? How did we get here? How did this, how did they let this happen? This is a PR disaster. It's because the government is an organized mess. You've got all these different groups that have no oversight. They don't have communication with each other. They're, they are worrying. Just, they have they, fighting. They just get buckets of money. Yeah. And they interfight. Um, what was it with Donald Rumsfeld right before 9-11? The day before 9-11? So they said there was two, two, two trillion dollars missing? Yes. I think it was, or was it three? Two or three trillion dollars. It's unaccounted for. Account for. It's just missing. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that was a conspiracy with 9-11. Well, the, build, the, the but, plane that hit the building hit the accounting department. And then money, two trillion dollars burned up or something. No, no it, <laughs> it, 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 it hit the... the, the, the the accounting department. That's good, eh? Where the, all those auditing, those files were destroyed. And the people that were working on them were taken out. Isn't that? Uh, aliens. I, I don't, I, you know, let's not talk about 9-11. I, no, I don't want to talk about 9-11. No, it, was no, just, it was just the money. You know, the fact that that was, that was never entered into the conversation because we had other things to talk about. But the fact remains that they acknowledged. He did point, a news, he did a press conference. Two trillion dollars that they couldn't—they're like, oh, it just disappeared. 
that's a lot of money. Like people, they hear numbers like billions or trillions and they so don't think about it. What are they doing with all that money? Exactly. Where is it going? And why do you need that much money? Like, I mean, the military has got some neat toys. None of those toys are warrant two trillion dollars. And is that like over what time period was that 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 goes? <laughs> What's our budget every year? Okay. Like, Full disclosure could just be that we find out where that two billion dollars, two trillion dollars went. Yeah. That's full disclosure. It, full disclosure is going to be something like that. People are going to get the truth about something and it's going to throw them off balance big time. Okay. That's what's going to happen this summer. I'm going to stake my reputation on it. Should let's I do talk that? About, um, should sure, I, you can. No, should I actually stake my reputation on it? What do you here's want to stake it on? Be, be exact. That's, that there's going to be a big disclosure this summer. Okay. And what is the disclosure going to be? I, I don't know. I oh, don't okay. know. People okay. are going to say, "Oh my God, WTF? What do I do next?" They're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to evoke shock. they're going to evoke their deity. They're going to say, "Oh my God, oh my, it's going to be that kind of a thing," and so it's going to be a lot of shock, people. You think it, it'll be a lot of people? It'll be the mass population. Yes. Now I'm going to shit or get off the pot because by the end of the summer, if nothing happens, this is being recorded. Then I'm my, my I'm credit I. I can't stake, stake my reputation on anything again. Uh, it, no, I'll, no, I'll give you a free pass. Or I'll come, no, no, I'll, you know what? I'll say it happened spiritually. I'll get out of it. It happened in another It happened in another, another, another universe. No, something changed. Someone did something. Yeah. Right? No, no, no. You know, I'll have to just answer for it at the end of the summer. All right? First well, part of September, I will answer for how I got it wrong. As long as it doesn't involve like, you know, white New Balance sneakers and cyanide capsules oh heaven's you know? gate yeah no 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 <laughs> no no i'm um, not talking about heaven's gate no that no so a full disclosure about, why not let's talk about kit green so for people who don't know dr kit green what is his i think he's a forensic pathologist i think so i think that's mm -hmm. what his degree is um being involved in in UFO stuff with the government and you know other classified weird programs yeah um, for decades talks a little bit in the public he gave an interview a year or two ago where he was talking about the alien autopsy so right. there were some emails that were leaked where he said he basically validated the alien autopsy footage that Fox News or Fox Channel turned into a whole tv special no that was that was cgi that was fake okay so but kit green said i saw this in a classified setting it's real and then during this interview he was asked about it and he said you know what i was taken in like i did see something but he's like over the course of my career i was given information about dna from aliens and stuff a dozen times and he's like i think all of it was fake you know it would like show up on my doorstep it was all fake yep. but here was one of the things he said he got some information that was like some sort of genetic analysis that had been done with a machine and he he was like this is out of my pay grade i i don't know what to do he took it to another expert within the government who you know had a classified rating. Mm -hmm. He was like, what can you make of this? And the guy was like, let me take it and I'll study it and I'll bring it back. He brought it back to Kit Green. He said, I think this is fake, but it is so expertly crafted that almost anybody would fall for it. But the thing was, he said, this is done using technology that we don't, we don't have. You can't do this. And then I think he said it was like seven years later, that technology was invented developed the government had it at that point and was using it to create fake information so even their own people right wouldn't know what was real and what wasn't because that's right. what the cia does they don't because they don't want any person to you know do a robert hansen and flip and be able to give all the secrets to the chinese or the russians or whoever right. so you give them fake stuff but they got to believe it and so yep. It's possible that David Grush is, has been fed fake information from a bunch of sources, and it's not real. 
the uh, the Richard Dotty effect, right? Yeah. Um. So it's a it's a possibility. But again, the the full disclosure is when that the the truth is going to come out. That's what I think is happening this summer. Not the eschaton. That's happening in twenty twenty six. Or that's yeah. somebody else needs to explain that. And so, how do you think the truth is coming out? Are you willing to go? How that's going to? I don't know. It's going to be our private data. It's going to be disclosure. It's going to be events. It could be craft. At this, you know, it could be. Listen, here's the truth. If there isn't a phenomenon, if it is a non-human intelligence that can do this kind of stuff, at any moment it could come out of the closet. At any moment, you could have a mass sighting over a city with everyone looking at their with their cell phones. In broad daylight, it could happen at any moment. And we're at, I don't think humans are in any control of that whatsoever. I don't think we even have any influence over it. That's the reality. Something big could happen on Skimaka Ranch at any second. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's it, especially when you we say it's in control and it's intelligent. So we have to assume that it's intelligently not showing up, not manifesting, not doing its full disclosure. That to me is the real full disclosure. Even if when the government says we've public. got craft, it's when craft actually yeah. show up and they say, "Okay, we know you humans. We know you've just told your mass audience, your your people, that this is real. Now we can show up." That's right. the 2026 thing. If there's, if anything's going to happen in 2026, that's what I think it's going to be. Is that this the mass sightings comes forward in some way and says, you know, the time is right. You need to know, whatever. How it does that, I, I'm not sure. I don't think it's going to land on the White House lawn. I think the way it happens is going to be the kind of thing where people are going to understand it at first. You know, it's like everybody's going to have the same dream. Or something weird. Oh, like that. right, 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 um, right. But I think what is probably going to come this summer. I'm willing to to go a little bit further. I don't want to stake my reputation on it, but my okay. guess. All right, try is it. That it's going to be something coming out of the academic community. That there's going to be like a paper published with you know big names. Maybe Avi Loeb will be on it, and they'll be like, "We've studied material. We've we had some material that we had access to." It's been studied and studied and analyzed every which way by numerous credible, you know, labs, academia, whatever. And we guarantee it's not from Earth. And that that's going to be a huge step forward in disclosure is there. The bringing science into it by saying we've finally got the scientific proof. Of non-human instruction, something. Yeah, that's that's my guess. That's going to be the big thing this summer. Okay, that's what you see this summer. See, I'm guessing. Yeah, I I think it's so much bigger than that. It has to be because in my mind, it's affecting the common person. The common person who doesn't even know about UFOs, just living their lives, getting up and doing work every day, that it's going to impact them somehow. It it hits too close to home, whatever the disclosure is. And maybe it is foreshadowed by, you know, people starting to have mass dreams, maybe of the same person, the same face in their dreams all over. Someone's coming, you know, there's, we don't know how this is going to go down, but it's going to include the phenomena. You think about that. Like if everybody had the same dream, you know, it would start by somebody would post on Reddit and they'd be like, I, I had the weirdest dream the other night. And somebody else would be like, I had that dream. And another person, and then more people, and then it would get onto Twitter, and it would get, you know, onto Facebook, and then it would be on the news, and be like everyone had the same dream, what heard the it? same voice, saw the same face, same message, faces, messages, yeah. whatever. And they, you know, yep. the message could be "We're here," you know, right? And we love you, or whatever. We're sorry. Yeah. Please forgive us. Or Thank what you. What Stuart Davis said, as Mantis told him, "Remember, remember who you are. Remember who you work for." I can't, I, I need to go back and double that check. That sounds so John C. Lilly. That sounds like Echo. You're going to have to elaborate. And John C. Lilly, it, it's too long of a story. John C. Lilly, he's, he's in the same category as Philip K. Dick in terms of how he saw the future because of his experiences. The and science fiction he, writer? Yes. Yes, Philip K. Dick. John C. Lilly claims to have received a, a message from what he called Echo, E-C-C-O. The Earth Coincidence Control Office. 
Yes. And okay. it's basically, it's basically, they say we control the large coincidences in your life. You control the small ones. They're yep. revealing that they actually have influence over our coincidences. It's a coincidence control thing. Wasn't this the same group that were doing, they were like channeling this information, right? Right. He was taking like mescaline in a, in a, in a tank. Was this back in the, in the fifties? Fifties and sixties. He was, yeah. he was in the isolation tank. He invented the isolation tank. And he was working with the government. The government was getting that yes. information. Oh, absolutely. Jacques Vallée validated this in one of his journals. Right. The last journal that was published. Yes. He was like, yeah, that actually happened. And the government took it seriously. Well, right. During the time, he wouldn't tell anybody what psychedelic he was taking. He just said, I'm taking psychedelics. And we found out later, like near his death, that it was he was mescaline the whole time. And I don't even know. You know, that's 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 beyond my my comprehension of what that is but he got this message that basically there's there's this force or whatever you know let's call it on the other side of the veil that actually controls coincidences and they control them in the macro level and then you control them you know the small little coincidences in your life you know meaningful you know there's no such thing as a coincidence kind of a thing synchronicities synchronicity right exactly yeah. but the big profound ones the big ones you get caught up in in your life the most profound moments of your life, those are in their control. And basically, so it's a philosophy because they're in control, not you. You need to remain calm and you need to be self-aware during the entire experience. You know what I mean? It's basically, there's a certain way you need to, to behave when these big co coincidences happen in your life. And I, and I had some direct evidence of this with one of my experiences well um, it's we'll called the search another time it's called the search for echo this is kind of weird it's called the search for echo where you want to know well am i a part of this or not you know these synchronicities where are they coming from am i have i signed up to this agreement you know to to be aware of this that i'm not you know how these conditions were it's it's very simple it's not a religion it's just a way of seeing things so when weird shit goes down in your life you're like okay i know this is out of my control. This what's happened is out of my control, but here's how I'm going to handle it. Right. It helps yeah. you get through overwhelming moments in your life. Yeah. If you sort of buy into it. So it's called the search for echo. How do I know if I'm in this, how, I, you know, and, um, and so he's got these nine steps that you go through so that you, you know, you're a part of it. Right. And most people find out about it. They feel like they're already in it. They feel they're already part of it, that they're actually, they're part of having coincidences happen for other people. They're the angel in other people's lives. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're creating serendipity. They're guided somehow. And that's this whole echo thing, right? And when you realize that you're a part of echo, then you're not searching for echo. The search is over. And you have a transformation in your life. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic concept. It's all John C. Lilly. But it's people are controlling things behind this. People, entities, intelligences. It adds a lot of meaning to life if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. And a strategy of how to deal with these crises, right? I, I believe and I'm to talking. Some degree. I'm talking that there's going to be a big, huge coincidence out there that we don't have control. And it's going to be a coincidence. People are going to go, what the WTF? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just Facebook profiles are going to be opened up and everybody freaks out and it leads to, but I think this is this is phenomena related somehow. Yeah. Somehow it is. And so the people who are, are saying something's coming, how would they know? Well, I, what I've heard from some people is it's a spidey sense. And, and people have had spidey sense before, but this is like a lot of people. It's not like the spidey sense before 9-11. People had precognitive dreams. They felt something big was going to happen in the next month. You know, they're, But that we're not talking about a 9-11 event. This is a different kind of a spidey sense. It's like a good thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? The, Disclosure is consciousness project. This global um, disclosure is actually a very good thing. It's Ultimately. not a calamity. It's not a hurricane. It's not a volcano. It's not an earthquake. It's, it's a disclosure of information of truth to the masses but in a way that they people. have to deal with it. They have to yeah. deal with it. But it's up to people how they're going to react to it. Not everybody's going to react in a positive way. Oh, absolutely not. And, and we're and seeing you can't, that. 
you can't prepare for it either. Yeah. Because it's not going to be what you think it is. There's no way to prepare for it. Other than something so, like the echo philosophy, where you know something could go down at any minute and you know how you're going to, you've primed yourself to be able to handle it and handle it a certain way. That's what echo is all about. That can help, but you can't like uh, be a prepper and prepare for something like this. No, no. I was just going to note over the past 24 hours on the UFO subreddit, there've been a lot of posts about ontological shock. I, one of them was mine. Yeah. Just kind of telling people, look, you know, you may experience this depending on what your worldview is and how it's confronted and et cetera. And it's intense. It's not just like you go, oh, wow, it's not just the WTF. Like you can go into a, a major depression that it, lasts. For, it's an oh, my God you know, as well. This is an, oh, my God. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, you can you can have depersonalization or derealization. Yep. Like this is a like you could end up needing therapy kind of thing. Like Brandon Fugel um, warned. This comes from Brandon Fugel. He's warning that people are going to need therapy by the end of uh, the, this season of Skinwalker Ranch. He has said that. Yeah. <laughs> he's gone on the record to say. I know. He hasn't given me a percentage yet. I want to ask him if he's got a percentage. Yes. But we, we have questions. And yet we joke about it. But if it's really serious, that's that's not a good thing. That someone has some kind of a mental issue because of watching a TV show. Well, no, I, right? you know, again, it's like, ultimately, I think whatever these things are that happen, even in 2026, if something happens, ultimately, I think it's a good thing. But in the short term, you know, any sort of major fundamental change is going to be very, very hard. Very, very painful. And yeah. there's no going back and you can't unsee it. Whatever this is, you cannot unsee it. Once you see it, you see it. You know, one of the weird things about UFOs is so many people who see them, mm -hmm. just simply seeing a UFO, yep. it's like it flips a switch in exactly. people's brains, yep. and they're never the same after that. Never. Even and the they pseudoskeptics. Say they're like, I saw it, and then I, I couldn't unsee it, and now I'm obsessed with it. I can't get it out of my mind. Like, I have to understand it, because Even the challenge is what you know about reality because you see this thing and you're like that can't be real that 100 percent can't be real that does not exist there's nothing like that and yet you're seeing it your senses are telling you oh it's real and people also frequently report having it they feel like there's a connection right psychological the connection thing. yeah that they see it and they're like it sees them and their mind and is being read they yeah. know it yeah um, and sometimes it will react to their thoughts, you know, and that's CE5 is intentionally doing that. You summon these things and they react to you. Of course, skeptics are like, oh, it's satellites or planes or whatever. Um, it does need to be, we need better research on it. People have tried to organize it, but it's, people aren't there yet. But there's, there's something to this, but not every experience is positive. Right. Some Imagine people have very bad experiences. And, you know, Jim Semivan has warned people, don't do it. Like, it's not worth the risk. Like, if things go great, awesome. But sometimes they don't. What if we had some professional contact experiencers do what they do best on Skinwalker Ranch on a, on a, on a full moon or no, no, a new moon, a new moon. There's yeah. no moon. On yeah. a new moon, they do their thing out there in the field at midnight. And see what happens is that too yeah. much woo that they would never it, do think that on for the ranch? Them it is i don't think they i don't think they would but, publicize it let's put but, it that but they, way they, they brought a jewish priest out there and on camera he did his ceremony to open a portal yeah why couldn't they have professionals in the contact work i don't i, I don't just the, the controversy i think it would what's the controversy if they get something on skepticism film? well religion is accepted by the masses, you know, but CE5 isn't that it's, it's just kind of, it's just bias is all it is. Well, it's transcendental meditation where you start yeah. with yourself and you expand out so that your consciousness can reach way out into the cosmos and connect. I've done it. I've done the, I've done Stephen Greer has got like a 25 minute meditation recording of, of how to do it's actually what you do it's just meditate that meditation recording is on youtube 
and you can just do it. You just close. If anyone's done meditation, you close your eyes and you just listen to it. And it makes a lot of sense. And it, it has a philosophy and a religion in it. That it's one world, you know, it's one life society in the universe, right? And all these other, all these other species care about us, want us to have free energy, right? They just want us to figure out our shit. And you're just mentally taking yourself on this journey to go out there and make contact with them. I've yeah. done it. I've done it like in a series of nights, I've done it outside. Nothing. You feel like you're connecting with something, but you don't see anything. You know what I mean? But you're on their wavelength because you're, you're yeah. meditating on yeah. this thing. And, and there's something to it. It, it. You get a physical sensation when you do it. Well, you know, having, it's very similar modality wise to doing remote viewing, which I've experimented with, with, you know, dramatic success. Um, but even the government's, you know, the CIA's best remote viewers achieved 65% accuracy um, or thereabouts. Yeah. And they couldn't tell the difference between when they were getting a genuine thing and when it was their imagination. They could never overcome that. A hundred percent couldn't tell the difference. Right. And that was ultimately why one of the reasons why it was, you know, publicly scrapped at least. Um, and it makes it difficult. You know, you do these things and you're like, I think, I think I'm getting something, but I don't know. Am I really, am I not, you know? And you just, ultimately it's just a matter of faith is all it is. You got to have faith that you're actually connecting to something. And right. I kind of feel like, you know, the phenomenon, this is what it's trying to teach us. You know, you got to believe you got to. It's, it's the goat sheep. You want to explain yeah. the goat sheep? The, yeah. The, uh, the, in parapsychology, the, the sheep goat effect. So what they found is that the people who have a strong disbelief in psi phenomenon tend to not have, they don't experience it. And this is statistically borne out. Like they've, they've said, yeah, this is real. Like if you believe it, now, you're more likely on. to get positive results. Hold on. This is peer reviewed science. Yes. This is, these are peer reviewed papers from multiple sources. Yes. Right. This is like multiple. <laughs> There's a famous experiment um, <clears throat> with Marilyn Schlitz and Richard Wiseman. So what happened was Marilyn Schlitz did a, an experiment on staring. So, you know, a person's in a room, a shielded room. There's a camera. And then there's a person somewhere else with a TV and they can look at the camera. And, you know, at a random time, they would look at the camera and focus on the person in the room. And then that person would note whether they felt they were being stared at or not. Yeah. And statistically, they did better than chance. They they could tell when someone was staring at them. And she published her paper. And Richard Wiseman, who is a skeptic, looked at it and went, I can't find any fault in her science, but there's no way she could be getting a positive result. So he replicated the experiment and he got no result. And he published that, but he was like, why did she get a result? Like, I couldn't find a problem. So he communicated with her and they teamed up to do the experiment together. And it was the same protocols, the same, the same equipment, the same location, the same pool of people. Everything was identical. But at the end of the experiment, she got results and he didn't. And they published their paper together and they were like, we can't explain it. But what the parapsychologist said is, we've already explained it. It's the sheep goat effect. You, all you did was you, you proved it again. We've proven it over and over again. There's also psi missing. So they'll do an experiment where, you know, you got like four possible choices and you have to pick the right one. By chance, you should get it right 25% of the time. In these experiments over and over, people get it right 33% of the time on average. They should, but it indicates that sometimes they know what the right answer is. That, that's, psychically. that's statistically but, significant. Yes, but... The skeptics get it wrong more often than chance, and they call it psi missing. They're so they still go down using psi ability, but then their brain is protecting their worldview by taking the right answer and making sure they don't pick it and giving them the wrong answer. So instead of twenty five percent, maybe they're like fifteen percent accurate. Yeah, it's but like a self sabotage. It's a, it's a reverse 
placebo effect of something. It's it's it, well, that's the thing. It's still proving the existence. It still it still proves the phenomenon. Yeah. It proves the phenomenon is real that you can actually turn it off as well as turn it on. Right? You're still using it. It's just that subconsciously, oh, right. your brain is taking the information to it's, give you the wrong answer to support your beliefs. They actually have psiability. Yes, they could be. They could be powerful psychics. They could have a lot of psi as skeptics because it's helping them. It's helping them stay a goat. Yes. Right. So things don't happen to them. That explains what happened to Stephen or didn't happen to Stephen Greenstreet on Skinwalker Ranch. He's a goat. Yes, he's a goat. He's a goat. So, and so it's like with the psychic thing, one out of four cards, he's going to hit 15%. He's not going to hit 25%. He's not a control. Statistically, most people exhibit psiability. Not everyone. But it's most it's people. most people would get the 25% with the four cards. No, most people get statistically 33%. Most people get 33%. Most people get 33%. What about like psychics that have proven that they're they have some capabilities? Would they be they even higher? They'll do that? better. Yeah. Yeah. There have been there was a at least one study that was done where the person got it right a hundred percent of the time. Hold on. So basically the 33% is for the normal person. So we've already got it built in. A robot would be 25%, right? Yes. A robot, okay. 25%. A robot would just, okay. Randomly picking them. You're going to, okay, I got it. Eh, well, well, actually, <laughs> I, I, I will come back to that. That's okay. I'm, I'm just trying to understand the, yeah. the bigger picture here, but that the goats don't get 25% or 33%. They get 15%. I can't give you the exact but it, uh, if it's 33% but yes. versus 25, maybe it's 20% or what? I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's probably less. equal the same. It's the same thing, right? 25 I, to 33, I don't know if it's 25. The same thing, okay. But it, it's worse than chance. And it's statistically measurable and yes. it explains the goat sheep phenomenon. But it's not, even that is not 100% of the time. Not every skeptic experiences that. And that may be tied to the fact that, you know, it's just like playing basketball or playing the piano or whatever. Some people are more gifted than others at this. They're more talented right. naturally. It's a skill anybody, but, it's uh, a skill uh, uh, most people can develop and improve yeah. with practice. Um, but, it you know, the practice is pretty weird because it's hard to sort out, you know, is it imagination or not? You just kind of have to have faith in it. And right. if you can get over that hump and you have that you're just willing to accept it, you can some people can do pretty amazing things with it. Well, but anybody can learn how to dribble a basketball. I mean, I guess. I don't I don't know. I, I don't want to say yeah, I would think so, but I'm sure there are cases where you know people don't have the good hand eye coordination or whatever. To learn doing how to dribble hula, a basketball? Doing a hula hoop, maybe, you know? Yeah, okay. Um but this is the same thing. Everyone has some innate psi ability. Most people have innate psi ability. Have. They found that some people don't, and they think it's genetic. It seems, you know. Okay, so carried down through family lines. Yeah. And this correlates with experiencers. And that's what Gary Nolan was investigating. That people who seem to have better intuitive sense, in other words, maybe they're using psi ability. Mm -hmm. also seem to be statistically much more likely to have contact experiences. And there's the whole, you know, chicken egg question. Yeah. Why? Is it the having contact increases psiability? Or if you have psiability, are you more likely to have contact? It seems like the latter to me. Um, some people are more predisposed. There's also the possibility that they're interested in you know, some of these non-human intelligences are interested in psi ability yeah. and they're monitoring those people and they're interacting with them, you know, or maybe the people show up like, like lighthouses. That's a term that's been used. Yeah. And so they, they're they more visible to the, whatever's on the other side of the veil or in this other dimension, you know, maybe they put off a glow or something and they go, oh, you know, we can interact with that individual more easily than these others and so they show up right whatever right. you know whatever it is that that seems to be what's going on yeah some yeah. people are more attractive to these beings than others they're just more visible to them yeah yeah well I, my understanding is that th those people that are tuned in 
are also experiencing this sense that there's some big disclosure, that they're getting psychically yeah. prepared for it. Yeah, they're being, but they're all getting these different things. Like, I may mean, see a huge calamity coming, but some of them are like, oh, the grid is going to go down from a solar flare. Others are like, no, a meteor is going to strike the planet. Or, you know, somebody else is like, no, it's going to be a massive earthquake or something. So not everybody kind of has a sense of like, there's a big change coming. But, you know, with remote viewing, a lot of it is symbolic. Yeah. So, for example, the remote viewers, if they saw an upside down V, um, they they learned over time that if the different remote viewers saw an upside down V, it often had something to do with a church. Now, mm. why does this represent a church, that symbol? Don't know. Do you, you know, is it like it's a chapel? Prayer? It's folding. No, it's a chapel. You chapel? have the people inside, you know? Yeah, maybe. Um, but it does seem to be symbolic a lot. And yeah. so the question is, are people just picking up that there is something that is going to fundamentally change humanity? And their brain is just going, you know, to you, the representation of that is an asteroid hitting the Earth or an earthquake or whatever. It's symbolic. It'll feel like up, that. They're picking up on something. It, there, it's something out there and it will feel like that to them. Yeah. It's not that it'll actually literally happen. Yeah. But people do claim that, that, you know, in their abductions, the beings were like, we're going to show you. Right. What's going to happen. Gonna happen. Right. And, and it they doesn't showed happen. them imagery or a nuclear war is another example. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not going to uh, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't seem like that's a high probability. More so than it was, I guess. I can see one nuclear happen. bomb going off and that would freak everybody out. And, it, and especially like the reason it happened, it might have been an accident. Or it was uncalled for, unjustified, you know, you know, unintentional maybe, or not really thought through before it happened. You know, someone that has a or lot a of remorse for attack it. or something. What somebody yeah. has a lot of remorse. Everyone's pissed off about why it happened, right? It's yeah. controversial of why it, why it went down, and it's just one, and that just shatters, you know, the world government completely. It shatters, you know, that shatters a lot, depending on who does it. And where they do it, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. think that's well, it would in the generate cards. Generate fear. Yeah, I don't think that's know? in the cards. I, that to me, that doesn't feel like full disclosure to me. Full disclosure is well, something that people realize. There's something yeah. they see, someone where they yeah. recognize. I texted you yesterday and said, "Well, maybe that everyone will just know the name of God." The real, like the real. Yeah. What if they just have a come to Jesus with, with you know, not like meeting Jesus. I mean, have a come to you know what a come to Jesus means. Were you yeah. level with somebody? Yeah. We need to have a come to Jesus. We got to level with you, right? Maybe yeah. there's a collective come to Jesus. Maybe that is the second coming of Jesus, is everybody having a come to Jesus all at once on the planet. In one form, it's a metaphor, right? Yeah. Christ Every consciousness kind of. Well, no, no, I'm not. I'm not that's not oh, a religion. You're, you're not talking about that. I, I know what you mean with the come to Jesus is different from that, but I'll, I won't say there is that I'll say leveling well. with other people where people actually say, you know what, this is the truth. Humans have this ability to just level with each other. And they say, you know what, I'm going to level with you. And they're really leveling with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That yep. between two people is full disclosure. If I say, Charles, I've got to level with you. This is the, I mean, this is my absolute bearing my soul truth. Yeah. That's full disclosure to you at that point, right? That's a moment of full disclosure. It's something like that, but maybe on a global scale where people have to level with each other. They have to level with the reality. They have to look in the mirror and go, okay, here's where I'm really at because of here's this information. What, here's what it all means. Or who, yeah, here's who I really picture. am, or here's what's really going on. It, it's, yeah. it's a leveling. I keep saying it's a come to G, but it's, it's everybody levels with themselves. There's this massive, it's like, this is what's really going on. And it well, could be, they know the name of the true God or they know whatever it is. Yeah. I, I, I think people will be evoking deity. I, I've been posting, you know, what I think some of the big picture is the things I'm more confident about I, yeah. over and over again, various places. I trot this out every once in a while. And I'm like, you know, just so you know, like, this is what these people are saying. Shock Fele, Gary Nolan, Kit Green, yep. Eric Davis, you know, they they're not all telling the exact same story, but they're all kind of on the same page. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm like, this is what that is. Like, these are the things that are being discussed. These are the ideas, whatever. And over time, people have gotten more receptive to that. So, you know, they're learning. It's coming from somewhere. People are, are yep. more open to the to the woo. People are more open to the idea that, you know, what you see every day, what you deal with is not the truth of reality. There is there's more to it. And the, if you want to engage in it, it's there. The, the, the full disclosure could be that woo is real. Yeah. Oops. And that 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 fits all the criteria that I came up with, how people are going to react is yeah. woo is real. Yeah. It it just opens up a lot of it, it's it's a big deal, but it's I don't it's not the eschaton, it's not the end of the world. Everyone's here still next year. Life goes on. It's not, I don't think it's gonna be something like that. I think potentially in the future, but we're not doomers. I'm, are you a doomer? I'm not a doomer. No, I'm not a doomer at all. I'm not a doomer. I, and I'm not a prepper. Also, are you a prepper? Are you prepping nope. for anything? I, I'm not I used to. For anything. Uh, there was a time when I was like, oh, you I can't need to prepare because blah, blah, blah. It's never I what knew. you think it's going to be. So I was the town crier before the pandemic. Starting in December of 2020. What, yeah. what was the pandemic? 2020. December of, of 2019. Yeah. I was telling my friends, hey, there's something going on. There's in, something in, in Wuhan. Yeah. Um, and by February, I had drafted an email with predictions, 15 predictions on it. Whoa. This is going to happen. Schools are going to get shut down. Um, major clothing manufacturers are going to go out of business. Like random supply stuff. chain's going to be messed up. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I, you know, I didn't get the scale, right. It wasn't perfect, but pretty much all the things that I mentioned were true to some degree. And I sent this email out to my friends and man, I got in fights with people like, you know, they got really angry. One of my friends did. I thought his head was going to explode. You're, you're so Cassandra. Upset. You know, Cassandra is your Cassandra. Yeah. You're and cursed so to I, know the future and no one will listen. In that instance, you yeah. know, like what my therapist told me, she was like, you know, trying to predict the small stuff. I overthink it. You know, I, I don't always get that right. But on the big, the big stuff, I've been hitting it right a lot yeah, of the time. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because I'm hyper rational, which is another term she's used. Um, but I know that, you know, I've used remote viewing. I've had precognitive experiences. I believe everybody's got an ability to tap into this stuff to some degree. Yep. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm more tapped in, but I'm, I, it scares me and I don't, you know, it makes me uncomfortable. And I don't want to go there. I don't, I don't do remote viewing anymore. I haven't messed with it. I'm not even using the tarot at this point. Um, it, it all got to be a little too much. I was like, I got to, I got to live in society. Like I got to live in the real world. I got to be able to interact with other people. Right. Right. I gotta, I gotta slow my roll on this. This is too much. Yeah. Even for me, it's too much for me to handle. I gotta, gotta calm it down. And so if people get the big dump, they get the, you know, the big disclosure. Yeah. Um, some people are going to be able to handle it, but I think a lot of people are going to, are going to struggle. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a great place to end right there. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're so. running out of time here. Yeah. Before we end, I just want to ask you a question. I think for most of these recordings we do, I'm going to turn the comments off because then we have to, we have to babysit and we have to deal with them. Does that make sense? We have to like read them and respond. I this don't is, care. Personally. Well, this is, never, this is my yeah, question. Yeah. If, if you feel like you've got time to take a look at what goes on when we post this video, I'll leave the comments open so people can ask questions, make comments. You realize we're not doing these recordings anticipating what hornet's nests were kicking. You know, oh, yeah. we, we're I, no, all over I'm the place in it. terms of what we say. And yeah. this is just an open conversation. But, you know, do we want to have the comments open and would you... I would just... engage with with people who seem like they're they're genuinely okay want to discuss, but the, it totally depends on how much. If we get two thousand comments, I can't I can't cope with that. You know, uh, that's, get, that's not going to happen. Get twenty, I I can deal with that. We, th um, this is this is not a lot of people are going to see this. I would, uh, yeah. I think it's fine to start with them on, and we'll see how it goes. And then <sighs> okay, All and right. then we can turn them off. Like at any point, people yeah. Can, I guess we can. Yeah, if people can't behave themselves, then they can argue about us somewhere else. You know? Okay. 
Um, All right. Well, let's end the recording here. Is there anything else you okay. want to say to the future? I'm people? excited about tonight. I, you know, we'll oh, see. The, yeah, the I know people aren't going to see this until afterwards and they're going to be like, ah, oh, it was exciting or it wasn't. Um, yep. But I'm excited. I think this is big, regardless of how the, how, what the outcome is long term. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hey, it was great talking to you, Charles. Yeah, likewise. Okay. Okay. We'll Thank talk you. later. Bye. Bye.